Okay, so the first tip, we need to minimize the amount of programs that start up automatically when we turn our computer on. So just like our Android boxes or our Fire Sticks, the more things that are running in the background, the greater negative impact that will have on your device or your computer. So we need to basically minimize those things. And the way we do that is if you just go to your desktop on your computer and go to the taskbar at the bottom here, if you just do a right click there and select the option Task Manager. So these are all of the things that are configured to start up automatically every time you turn on your computer. And what we can do is we can actually sort them out by this startup impact. So the things are set to high or medium. These things are having a big impact to your computer startup time. So if you have too many things which are having a high impact, that will definitely slow down your computer when it first turns on. So what we can do is we can basically go through the list and anything that you're not really using or you didn't know that was actually installed, you can basically disable it. So for example, here we've got this Java update scheduler, which we don't really need. So we can right click on that and we can say disable. So this means the next time I turn my computer on, this is not going to load. Similarly up here, for example, we can see we've got the Microsoft OneDrive set up. So I'm not using OneDrive. Why is that running in the background? Let's stop it. So again, the way we stop it is we do a right click and select disable. So this means now when we do restart our computer, because there's less things for the computer to load, it should load up much faster than before. Okay, so the next tip, we want to remove some of those pre-installed applications that get installed with Windows. So for whatever reason, in Microsoft's infinite wisdom, they decided to bundle so many standard applications with Windows 10. And there's just literally so many of them that you don't necessarily need. So everything from, you know, cooking applications to weather to fitness, these applications get pre-installed even if you don't necessarily want to use them. So let's now remove them. Now there is a couple of different ways you can remove them, but I personally found the easiest way is to use an application called 10 apps manager. So the way we get the application is if you just open up a browser on your computer and let's just search for 10 apps manager. So 10 apps manager. And you should see the first link on the windows club. Let's click on that now. And here we can just see what the application will look like. Let's just scroll down and we'll have options to remove all these applications here. So obviously if you want to use them, you can keep them. But I mean, things like, you know, travel or solitaire, actually, that's a pretty good game. Uh, things like, um, you know, getting started or get office or food. I mean, so these are things that are already installed. So if you don't need to use them, why, why have them on your computer? So let's now download this by clicking on this blue icon here. And this should now commence the download. Okay, here it is here. Let's just open that up. Let's just drag that to our desktop. Okay, let's start that now. And it's called 10 Apps Manager. And here it is guys, so here is a big list of applications. So what you can now do is you can individually go through them. So let's say for example, we don't want to use the money application. You can click on that and this will tell you, do you want to uninstall this? We can say yes. So that's now been removed from your device. And similarly, we can say we're not using the travel application. Let's click on that and click on yes. And that's now also removed. Now you can be a bit extreme on this and just say, I want to remove all these applications. So if you really don't want to use any of these applications, we can click, click on the red button here, remove all. And this will actually remove all the applications for you if you want to do that. Now, just as a word of warning, it does actually tell you that you should create a system restore point before uninstalling. So, so you can do that if you want to, but for this demonstration, let's just leave that. Okay, so next up we have disabling the visual effects. So Windows does come with some nice effects in the standard user interface. So you have some nice little shadows. You can obviously have the background, some of the custom themes. These are all really nice. However, if you do want to get the maximum performance out of your computer, especially if your computer is not very new, so you really want to get the maximum performance that you can. So if you do turn these special effects off, that will definitely give you a boost in performance. If you just go to the start button and let's search for the control panel, you can just start typing. Okay, there it is. Let's click on that now. Inside the control panel, let's click on system and security. So when you get to this screen, we now want to click on advanced or advanced system settings. Okay, we can see we have now the performance options here. Let's click on that now. And here we can just see some of the special effects that Windows has to make it look a little bit nicer. But in the case of maximum performance, let's turn some of these off. So let's say, for example, we don't want to have shadows under Windows. We can untick that. Click on apply. And that's now done. Or let's say, for example, we don't want to have translucent selection triangle. So you can basically go through these and anything that you're not really into, you can turn off. But if you just want the maximum performance, we can select this option up here. This will now disable all these options and give your computer the best possible performance. Let's click on apply. 
Okay, that's now all done. Next up, we want to run a PerfBon, a performance monitor analysis on our computer and find out exactly what's going on in the background. And the way we do that is let's go to the start button again. And let's type in CMD. On the command prompt, we want to do a right click and we want to select run as administrator. Let's do that now. Click on yes. Okay, so here we want to type in the command perfmon slash report. So here we're basically asking the computer to do a report on itself and just find out what the issues are, where the bottlenecks are, if there's any kind of like, you know, serious problems, put them all into a report and then show it to us. Okay, let's run that now. We can see it's now going to collect data for 60 seconds, compile that report and then present the results. Okay, so here is the report. So we can see on my computer, we don't have any major issues. So the stuff that's normally severe will be listed at the top. Then you have some of the normal checks at the bottom. So this is a very nice way to see exactly what's going on your computer, if there are some underlying issues or problems, and this will then tell you how you can fix them. But in my case, we can see it's all looking good and green. Next tip, we've got the disk cleanup utility. So over time, when you do install more and more programs, you will find that space on your hard drive is always going down. So one of the things we can run is a disk cleanup utility. And the way we do that is if you just go to the start button again, and let's just type in disk. And we can see there it is, disk cleanup. Let's click on that now. This will basically do an analysis on your disk and find out if there's any temporary files, any old installations that can be removed. So let's say, for example, we want to uninstall these temporary files. We can click on that. If you want to remove some of these other things, we can click on that as well. So you can just click on the things that you're not really using. And you can also click on this thing here, which says clean up some of the system files. So if you do install a service pack on your computer or some other big update, many times it does actually leave a lot of the older files that are not needed anymore. So you can actually remove them. So we can click on this thing here. This should now relaunch this cleanup utility and give you more things that you can actually remove. We can see it's scanning the Windows Update Cleanup. So if there were updates that were previously installed that are not needed anymore, this will show you how you can now remove them. Okay, we can see we've got 2.7 gigs. So it's actually a lot of space that the Windows Update Cleanup was taking. So we can click on that. Is there anything else we can click on? Uh, we can click on these temporary files as well. And now when I click on OK, this will now automatically remove all those files from my system, freeing up those valuable resources. Okay, so lastly, Windows 10 does have so many built-in tracking components in some of the built-in applications and some of the background processes. There literally is a lot of tracking built-in by default. So unless you opt out of that tracking, your computer will be constantly talking back to Microsoft. There really is a lot of data mining and tracking going on with Windows 10. And there's been many articles on the internet talking about this. Now, in terms of turning things off, there's a couple of different things we can do. I have personally found this application called Win10 Privacy to be the best. So if you just open up a browser and just search for Win10 Privacy, we can see it actually ends up on a German page, but we can change the language to English. So this is what I actually used on my Windows 10 uh, computer. And there literally is so many things you can actually turn off to improve the performance, but most importantly, turn off the tracking. So, I mean, this tracking they use to like, you know, give you context-based adverts, you know, based on your preferences, your browsing habits and everything else. They've got a reason why they're doing it, but I personally don't want to give up my personal data or send it back to Microsoft. So I definitely recommend turning a lot of these options off. So let's just download that now. Let's open that up and let's just drag that to the desktop as well. So with this one, because this is quite severe in terms of the stuff it can do, I do seriously recommend creating a restore point on your computer. And the way you do that is if you just go to the start button and just type in restore, and we can see we have an option here to create a restore point. Let's click on that now. And now we can just say, let's create a restore point. Let's click on create. And we can just call it like pre win 10 privacy settings. So just if there's any issues with you turning things off, you can always go back to this restore point and put your computer back to the exact same state it was before you run that tool. Okay, let's click on create and let's click on OK and that's now done. Okay, so just before we run it, we should actually create a new folder just for this software because when you do run it for the first time, it does actually create some extra files. So to prevent those files getting all over our desktop, let's just create a new folder and let's put this in here. Okay, let's now run this. And we can see it's created these extra files. So it just makes it a little bit neater when it's inside a folder than all over your desktop. And this is what the application looks like, guys. So we can see as a very simple interface, you've got the different options along the top for the different categories. So here we can see the privacy settings. So the stuff that's actually in green, that means you can literally just turn it off and that won't have any kind of adverse effect on your computer. 
The stuff that's yellow, you can turn this stuff off, but you need to be wary about exactly what the stuff does. And the red stuff, which we can see uh, over here, for example, you can also do this, but this can have serious negative effects on your system. So for example, here it's saying this is to block access to all Microsoft servers. So which means, you know, obviously they won't be able to collect any of your data for, you know, adverts or anything else. But at the same time, you will not be able to get Windows updates. So if you do want to update your computer to the latest version or the latest patch, if you have this enabled, then Windows update is going to break. So definitely be wary of the red ones. But anything that's green, guys, so we can see here, for example, we do I want to disable the Windows customer experience improvement program? Definitely because I'm not interested in that. Let's tick on that. Uh, I don't want to pub I want to disable the publishing of user activities. Let's tick on that. I'd like to deny Microsoft to use my diagnostic data. Let's tick on that. So literally anything you don't like or you don't like the look of, just click on it, click on save, and that will then apply. And this is just under privacy. We can just see there's so many ways we can customize our computer and block a lot of these things that are happening in the background. Here we can see some of the app stuff. You've got telemetry stuff here. The background apps is also a good one to check out, guys, because these things in the background are constantly fetching data, or sending and receiving data. So if you can disable any of these, so for example, I know I'm not using the voice recorder, I'm not using OneNote, I'm not using Weather. If you turn these things off, even if those applications are still installed on your computer, because you've disabled the background functionality, those applications won't be able to send or receive any data on your computer. So again, that should definitely help out your performance. Once you've selected all these things that you want to disable, we can then click on Set Change Settings. It says you want to apply that, click on OK. We can see it now says process completed and they'll just restart the program again just so you can see the stuff that wasn't ticked before has now been ticked. Now, for example, if we go back into background apps, we can see the voice recorder that I ticked and some of these other things are now showing as ticked, which means they are already disabled.